Recently, I was introduced to local artist Laurel Hartman. She invited us to her studio, which was ultimately an invitation into her life. As we know with art, there's generally a deeper meaning behind a painting, drawing, or sculpture. With Hartman's work, we're awakened to a life experience with several layers, some of which resonate with many of us, and others we've never encountered until now. Take a look. This is kind of a journal, a documentation of, I'm trying to communicate with my painting. The paintings lead me. They lead me to try to find maybe some of the darkness inside of me. Laurel Hartman is searching for direction. This wouldn't be the first time the artist has used one of her paintings as a signpost on the road of life. It's not really a, a formal art term, but I call it mapping. So I can see my work on the walls. They're all a map of different parts of my life. It kind of sounds a bit cliche, but it's a kind of a form of expression for me. And it's a way for me to help me understand myself and my journey. The maps are like chapters of an autobiography, but text is replaced with textures, and lines, shapes, and colors represent feelings. Something Hartman says is she had a hard time communicating as a child born and raised deaf. Hearing people, they have the opportunity to hear what's going on around them, so they can hear other people's conversations. You learn so much and you think of about so many things from hearing other people's conversations. And I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have a lot of ways to express my feelings and thoughts. In hindsight, I didn't think my parents really could understand my feelings. But through my paintings, my parents saw that they made me happy. For Hartman, art became a vehicle of self-expression as a child, and now it's also a tool of self-discovery. The artist says today her work is more about satisfying her needs on this journey of life rather than meeting the expectations of others. People look at my work and they say, I don't see you, I don't see Laurel within that painting. My feeling is I don't have to explain to you what it means. A large part of it is visual language, and I let people figure out for themselves. Maybe they get it, maybe they don't. I hope they find some beauty of my journey within the paintings. It's a complex journey that I've been on, and I want to show that in my work. Laurel Hartman is not only an artist, she's also a faculty member at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf at RIT. That's where artwork by students, alumni, and artists from around the globe is on display at the Dyer Art Center. I'm joined in the studio by Hartman and Tabitha Jacques, the director of the Dyer Art Center. They'll explain what they say when mainstream museums may not understand about the specialty of deaf art. Welcome to both and also to our interpreters today, Angela Hauser and Mandy Mothersell. And it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Tabitha, you were featured in an interview for WXXI's Arts and Focus program. And in the interview you said, people don't understand why it's so important to collect arts done by deaf people. Can you explain just a little bit that importance? Maybe what are people missing that you would like to share? Well, of course. I think deaf culture, it's important to know that we have rules, we have structures, we have our own language, we have our own art in comparison to other minorities. Women's studies, African American studies, there are various studies and deaf studies is the same way. And so for people to look at deaf people as just someone who cannot hear seems kind of trivial because we have an art that's important to analyze and to understand the meaning, the culture, and the rules behind the art, which will aid people in appreciating the complexities within deaf art. You would feel more connected and would appreciate it more if you understand the value within our society. What are some of the complexities that, that art done uh, by deaf artists can teach us? And this goes to both you, Tabitha, and also to Laurel. Well, I guess I'll start. 
One example is that deaf people who may have a hearing loss, that's not only the type of deaf person there is. There's a wide range of deaf people. Someone who's born deaf into a deaf family, which means they have immediate access to communication growing up. While other deaf people who are born within hearing families don't have that access com to communication. So their experience automatically are completely different from those who have deaf parents. Now, I'm not an artist per se as it relates to that, but you show that type of thing in your artwork, Laurel. You could explain that. Yeah, so you mentioned a hearing family. Also, not one size fits all for all deaf people within the deaf community. There are subgroups within the deaf community. Um, deaf artists have a way of being able to show different aspects of that community, different emotions, political uh, opinions, and different topics within the deaf community. What are some of the themes that, that we may see, and I know this is something that you, have, that you talked about um, in the WXXI Arts in Focus piece, there are some themes, some areas uh, of focus uh, that may be incredibly important um, for art done by deaf people to, to show and to express through their work. What are some of those themes? And I'll give this to, this is to both of you. Okay, well, there are specific themes. Um, for example, with paintings, we may focus on the eyes of a person more and make those larger and make the mouth smaller and the hands bigger and the ears smaller, which represents a deaf person. That may be in some paintings, but... You could also use different colors. Uh, some deaf artists use specific colors to try to show pride. You'd want to show pride using yellow or light colors or show the beauty of the deaf culture and not, uh, not make it about oppression, but show the lightness um, and the value of the culture. And also some artists may express anger as well related to their experiences growing up as a deaf person. It's not limited to one painting or one sculpture or one mixed media. It's such a wide range and we have such a broader type of ways to express ourselves as deaf people and our experiences. Laurel, this is something I did not have in the package that we did, the, the video story, but I thought it was really interesting because you talked, when I got to meet with you earlier, you talked about, um, you described your paintings as a form of visual language and that, and I would just kind of want to have you explain this here, how colors kind of pick you. You allow, as you paint, the journey to unfold and the colors come to you, they may not be pre-selected. Can you explain that just a little bit? <coughs> well, as I mentioned before, Picking colors is difficult. My, there's a specific form and approach to color, but I use my intuition. I use an intuitive approach. So what I do, I don't really plan the color. Some colors maybe make me feel more comfortable, and some colors make me feel uncomfortable. Uh, so. I just kind of overlap the colors, and maybe some of the colors that are weaker build up of, on top of other colors, and there's a lot of overlapping in my work that becomes a new set of color. And I, I have to think about my feelings at the moment, and, I, and that's not just because I'm deaf. There's other things in my life that I can put in my artwork. I'm a mother, I'm an educator. Um, so there's different feelings that affect me each day while I'm working. And the color has different meanings and can create complexity in certain areas of my painting. People might think of anxiety and they don't think about what color anxiety is. So there's no right color for a mood or feeling. So for me, it's definitely, I just let the color choose me and I just go with it in the moment. So typically, I try to go towards neutral colors and then at that moment, I have more of a blank slate 
a blank state of mind and I can just let the neutral colors ask me questions and lead me I mean, obviously, they're not literally asking me questions, but it just kind of, it's a back and forth play with my feelings and the colors that I choose. Well, the Dyer Art Center <clears throat> has been collecting art from national and internationally renowned deaf artists since the late 60s when the center opened. And I want to know what, Tabitha, are some of the methods uh, that you're using to kind of build this uh, bridge uh, between the art and the work that's being presented uh, in the community at large so they're aware of what you have and what you're offering well we have been doing a lot of really neat exhibits um, very for informative educational approaches trying to really invite the community and the public into Dyer Art. As I mentioned before, we do exhibits that are about deaf people, but it's various deaf people with varying experiences. And we want people to come and really look and think on them and appreciate the complexity and the layers that our deaf culture incorporates. We try, for example, I really focus on very strong deaf art, but I may also focus on deaf and, such as deaf and women art, deaf and Latina art, various areas so that people can get more of a sense of a person's experience. Very good. Well, a special thank you to my guests. Thank you so much for joining me today. Tabitha Jacques, Laurel Hartman, and interpreters Angela Hauser and Mandy Mothersell. Be sure to check out the work of local and internationally acclaimed deaf artists at the Dyer Art Center at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. You can learn more online at rit.edu slash ntid slash Dyer Arts.